There are two common causes of lower back pain, a herniated disc and lumbar spinal stenosis. Both can cause extreme discomfort and significant lifestyle changes if not treated. Arthur Zambianchi, a 65-year-old retiree living in O'Fallon, Missouri, was diagnosed with a herniated lumbar disc. It was pain going down from my butt down to my uh, calf and a, the pain would come when I would try to get up from a chair. Then it progressed uh, to where I couldn't bend down and tie my shoe and get up without having pain. Dr. Charles Weatherington is a neurosurgeon with SSM Neurosciences Institute who treats herniated discs. A lumbar herniated disc, which is also known as a slip disc or ruptured disc, is a portion of the disc that is the shock absorber in between the bones of the lumbar spine which has developed a weakness in it. And through that weakness, a piece or a portion of the disc actually pushes out beyond its normal edges and then pushes up sometimes against the nerves. When that happens, then a patient ends up with pain shooting down their leg, usually in that distribution of that nerve. Other people may even end up with weakness in that leg. They may end up with numbness tingling. A herniated lumbar disc typically occurs in the younger population. Many times it's associated with strenuous type activities or activities done in somewhat improper ways. Many times bending over to lift something as opposed to lifting with the legs. For herniated lumbar discs, the most common operation is a microdiscectomy. Lumbar microdiscectomies are where we as surgeons make a small incision over the back. We then move the muscle off the spine or sometimes even work through small tubes going through the muscle. In removing a small area of bone overlying the nerve, we're then able to move the nerve aside and remove the offending disc herniation from causing compression of the nerve. Dr. James Liu is Arthur Zambianchi's neurosurgeon at SSM. He says that like a herniated disc, lumbar spinal stenosis can cause extreme back pain and other symptoms. As part of the normal aging process or because of arthritis, soft tissue and bones in the spine will harden and expand, causing the space around the spinal cord to narrow. When spinal stenosis means narrowing of the spinal canal. When it gets to a certain degree in the patient, um, it will create compression of the nerves, and that can create a variety of different symptoms, including pain, numbness, and weakness. In severe situations, even more advanced symptoms may develop, such as difficulty with bowel and bladder control, in very severe cases, paralysis. Whereas with many spinal problems, the initial treatment of most of these conditions involves conservative management. Um, that includes uh, things like medications, pain medication, anti-inflammatories, muscle relaxants are commonly prescribed for managing the discomfort associated with these conditions. Physical therapy can frequently be helpful. Arthur tried a number of conservative treatments before deciding to have surgery. I called a friend and he recommended Dr. Liu. Of course, my question was, you know, how long would it take to recover and all? And he said, I, I'm only gonna make two little slits in your back. And that's when I knew it was going to be minimal invasive surgery because I've had that kind of surgery done before. The concept is basically that we'd like to do the same procedure through smaller apertures. Um, and in doing so, hopefully maintain as much of the normal anatomy as possible, disturb as little as we can in order to do an effective surgery to get the patient relief. A common surgical procedure for lumbar spinal stenosis is a spinal decompression or laminectomy. Lumbar laminectomy is the removal of a specific portion of the spine called the lamina, which is essentially the roof of the spinal canal. And by doing so, we create an opening into the spinal canal to create more room in that region and relieve the spinal stenosis. In addition to removing the bone, we usually remove a portion of some of the ligament that connects certain portions of the spine together. By removing these ligaments and removing this small area of bone, we try not to destabilize the spine to a point where it requires then a lumbar fusion. Sometimes the lumbar spinal stenosis is severe enough that we then have to think about a lumbar spinal fusion. A fusion procedure is a technique to stabilize one or more segments in the spine for a variety of different reasons. Fusion usually involves the placement of a bone graft of one form or another to stimulate the bone to grow, and then usually that is used in concert with some sort of fixation. 
Fixation meaning the placement of metal screws or rods or plates or a variety of different implants to try to immobilize the spine wherever we're trying to fuse it. With the particular procedure, you know, whether it's a discectomy, a laminectomy, or even a fusion, the stays are generally pretty short. For procedures like a microdiscectomy, the usual hospital stay is same-day surgery. In doing a microdiscectomy, either through a traditional open approach or through a minimally invasive approach, I would say the success rates are probably over 90% in terms of relief of back and leg pain. Laminectomies, in other words, doing the procedure to open up the spinal canal, also has a fairly high success rate. Overall return of function uh, is quite good after lumbar microdiscectomy surgery. Patients are usually able to get back to doing reasonably normal activities within four to six weeks after surgery. Do not do any lifting, nothing but walking, and just take it easy. And that's what I did for the first two weeks. And then I went to see him for my first post-operative visit, and he kind of gave me an okay to, to do a little bit more, but no heavy lifting. And that was basically it. SSM Neurosciences Institute approaches treatment of the lumbar spine through a multidisciplinary approach. We involve neurologists, pain management specialists, as well as neurosurgeons in the treatment of lumbar spine problems. I'm certainly blessed to be working with the nursing staff that we have as well as the facilities that we have and I think in regards to outcomes and patient satisfaction I think I would put our teams um, and our surgeons uh, up against any other competitor in the region. As far as SSM um, and Dr. Liu and his whole staff, they were very supportive, very knowledgeable. Even his office staff knew exactly what he was going to do. I don't feel any pain. I'm doing a lot of things I couldn't do before. I could bend over and tie my shoes. I can get dressed, standing up, go to the gym. Just about everything that I couldn't do. If you're in doubt about having the surgery, forget about it. It's a piece of cake. You know, you'll, I mean, mine was, was, was just great. It just came out great. To connect with an SSM neurosurgeon, call 1-866-SSM-DOCS.